completely not even related to the story that I had, you know, gave to people. So, of course, you know, I, I'm reading the review. I'm like, what an asshole. He never even read the book. You know what I mean? This is it's what's personal. going on in my head. It was definitely personal. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, of course, I had to make a comment back to him saying, dude, I, I, I hate to ask, but did, did you read the book? Because, you know, your point that you made here isn't even, you know, pers- consistent with the book. And he said that the investigating tactics that I, I took in my book, he would have did completely different. It was completely asinine. Now, my book is not about investigating, needless to say. No. So I, I, I had to write in there. I was like, dude, it, it, it's a story about a 14-year-old boy. Please share with me in any way that you would have done it completely different because I didn't even investigate in this. You know, I checked some things out. Don't get me wrong, but the two pages of what might be considered investigating in your eyes Maybe. I, I can guarantee you would have never did differently. And, you know, two days later, he wound up deleting his, his uh, you know, whole whole review. Yeah, because he felt stupid. <laughs> you were investigating that girl in that book. Oh, I really was. <laughs> that, that's the funny thing. My my book wasn't, I mean, there's some par- there's paranormal events in it, don't get me wrong, but it wasn't about paranormal. It was about, you know, um Finding finding little things in society and everyday life that helped me feel secure with myself. That's what the book was about. Well, and it was about your first, like, your budding interest in the paranormal. It was about that. It was on the interest. It, it, it was based around that, but it wasn't about it. And that's that, that, that's no, no, that. it just sounds like a, it just sounds like a guy that had an axe to grind with you, and he just used totally. it what opportunity he could to do it, even if it was unrelated. Absolutely. It, completely. But it's all good. But that's just the way critics are every once in a while. It, it, it's rather they see that my work is doing better than their work, and they're like, oh, i got to trash him and go into some assumed name and, you know, and make him feel stupid and then ensure people that every – in my review that everybody knows that my book is a lot better. <laughs> that's what it was. Yeah. Yeah, I've never, I've never gone to business of, of absolutely just downright trashing. Hang on, hang on one second. Yeah, it's just bogus that somebody had to do that. You know, he was just, you know, a troll's got a troll. You know that. You can't take it personally. It's not personal. It's just bullshit, and you know it. Yeah, it's just childish high school bullcrap. It, it's all jealousy. Oh, mm-hmm. this person did this. And it just doesn't matter how old you get, Jason. You know, it's always going to be there, and, you know, we just have to deal with it and, and go on with our lives. Well, that's that's going back. That's why I just stopped. I don't even I don't even read critics. I don't even you know read those kind of posts. If I ever get anything, which is very rare, someone comes on my Facebook and just is an ass. I don't even I don't even engage in conversation with them. They just get deleted, and uh, that's just how it is. Yeah. You can't engage in conversation with someone who's that hostile anyway. Yeah, I, I'm the same exact way. If anyone comes, you know, makes a post on my Facebook or even sends me a private message. In, in some way or form, it, whether if it's questioning, you know, what I do, or even if it's questioning somebody else. I had one guy sit down and say, you know, the psychic, she's fake. I'm, I'm like, all right, you're deleted and blocked now. Not because I even know. It has, it's completely irrelevant. But how the hell can you, you know, prove that a psychic is fake or not? You can't. So why are you telling right. me she's fake? You know what I mean? And if you're going to sit down and trash someone else or say something bad about someone else, however you want to say it, what makes you think you're not going to do it to me? So I mean, right? Completely, immediately, delete and block. Right. Or you like we did? We actually went out and experimented with psychics to see if you know to see what we could do to ensure that if they got something right, there was 100 percent absolutely no way they would have known that. Yeah. And uh, you know, we, we thought we were going to bust some people, and we didn't. We actually were, you know, were shocked at, at some of the things that came across. And um, yeah, that's. The, and that's another thing too is is the whole difference is okay, there's psychic, there's scientific, there's religious, there's the spiritual, there's the metaphysical, there's all these people and how they how they do this, they're their methods. I'm sorry, but use it all. If people are truly psychic, then there's a science behind it. So let's figure it out. You know, let's figure out why it is that they can tune into these different you know, senses or, or whatever the case may be. It's, it's figure out experimentation. Mm-hmm. It, it, I agree. It's actually very interesting. You know, when you, when you use a psychic's perspective on an investigation, 
and they happen to be right, um, it, it, it kind of blows your mind sometimes. It's almost to the point where it's it's almost like seeing a ghost, you know, seeing what they yeah. have to say, and you know, they nailed it. But uh, yeah, it's, we get all that. Oh, I can't believe that you did something with Chip Coffee because I we don't I don't like Chip Coffee. I, I, I can't love, believe I you did it. something with so and so and. You know, it's hey. You know what? He's a he's a great guy. I know him personally. I've known him for a long time. I have met him personally. I actually spoke at one of his coffee talk events years ago in Roswell when he first started doing them. He's a great guy. Mm-hmm. And he'll say, uh, Jody, yes, I think that you're right about that, and uh, <laughs> that's my chip impersonation. Uh-huh. I know. You sound just like him. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> He's a I don't know. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, he, he's, a, he's a really good guy. He's helped us out a lot. Um, yeah. And uh, we, we we go to conferences and hang out a lot. But, yeah, he's he, he is a really good guy. And it, what's funny is that that's where people base their judgment. They base it off of what they see on television. Yeah. And that's not – you know, seeing 23 minutes of someone is not their personality. You know, it's, it's not who they are. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I've always told people that television is going to make you out to be whatever they want you to be. It's as simple as that. If they want you to be the idiot on the show, then you're going to be the idiot. If they want you to be the that's hard so ass, true. then you're going to be the hard ass. And, and people have to realize that's that's not who they are in real life. And, and I've said that a hundred times. I mean, TV is TV. TV is about rating. TV is about making the network as much money as they po- you possibly yeah. can. And they're going to ensure yeah. yeah. And they're going to ensure to make sure that, you know, you make them as much money as they possibly can. They don't care about the paranormal. They don't give a rat's ass about the ghost. They don't care about person's grandmother or or whatever. They they don't care about that. They want a fat wallet. They want a new BMW. And and yeah. they're going to make sure that happens. You're going right. to well, they want they want you to play. It's true. Well, that's another thing, too, that you, you reminded me of, of people out there who they're always saying, I'm in this because I'm I'm trying to help people. I'm trying to – you know what? If you help someone in, you know, as a residual effect of the things you're doing, fine. But I don't know why all of a sudden paranormal has become some social work for people. It's like, no, you're out to gather evidence. You're, you're out to see what this stuff is. Helping someone in the long run, you know, that's – that's just a residual effect of it. But, you know, I think that's the danger where people all of a sudden, know that, you know, watching TV all these years, they form a paranormal group. All of a sudden they're psychiatrists and they can walk into people's homes and psychoanalyze them and tell them what to do, how to do things, how to live your life. You know, Oh my God, there, you should be scared. You should sell this home right away because you know, there's a demon here. Come on. <laughs> these people right. are being it, There's a present. It's I can, and it's I can, dangerous. If, if you, if you I, walk into a home with someone who's already mentally unstable and you tell them all that kind of stuff, you may just set them over the edge. I, I could share with you a funny story. <laughs> well, not a funny story, a fucked up story, but needless to say, I mean, it, it's funny on you. I, I, did, I did an investigation. I got called in to do an investigation about a year ago, maybe a little less than a year ago, I, probably you know closer towards the spring. And, uh, you know, I, I go to this place, and it's just a, a, an apartment, a, a, well, not an apartment, but a bi-level house. And, you know, one family was on the bottom floor, and, you know, she had her uh, brother-in-law or something like that on the, the second floor. And whatever the case is, it doesn't matter. But she calls me in. So I said, okay, I'll set up a preliminary interview. I'll figure out what's going on, and I'll do what I can. And um, I'm interviewing this lady, you know, asking about all kinds of weird shit, much like I always do. And trying to figure out if there's any truth to what she's saying or she's looking for attention or or whatever the case is. But she mentioned that she had a a previous team in there from Long Island, and they spent two hours in there and told her that there's a demon in the house, which is hence why I'm in there, because she got freaked out and wanted another opinion. And I'm like, okay, ma'am, we will do what we can to help you out. So we, we go in there, and I'm thinking to myself, while, while I'm investigating, and I got the camera set up, and I got recorders all over the place, and, you know, I got static boxes, you know, all over the place, and doing what I can to help this, this client. I'm thinking to myself, what kind of team spent two hours in a, a place, leaves and say, says there's a demon? What could have possibly happened in two hours? What? 
I, I don't know. It, it made me laugh. It made me laugh. But the lady was freaked out all because of that previous team. Yeah, I mean, then you have people with kids. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, kids. The, the kids might see something, and now everyone's scared. Um, and right. you have people who who actually try. So I've heard of stories where a team comes in, say it's they need to move out of the house as quick as they can, and now they do that. And now where do they go? Because they can't afford, you know, to have a house and an apartment or, you know, whatever the case may be. So right. it's like, come on, guys. Forming a paranormal team does not give you a medical degree right. um, in, 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 in um, you know, psychiatry or, or even social work or whatever it is you want to call it. And I really think that it's become – dangerous television has has created a dangerous situation um in a, in a lot of situations and you know hopefully if the tv shows kind of go away that whole thing goes away and the only people that are left are the people who are truly truly interested but you're going to have your whack jobs every now and then oh you always get your whack jobs oh, always get your whack jobs I, i've gone into the science cases where she claimed to be psychic and claimed there was some kind of dark entity in their house because she's a spiritualist. She doesn't use the word demon. She likes to use the word dark. And and I go into their house and the first thing I see next next to their her refrigerator is is a shop right bag loaded, loaded with psychological medications. And I'm like, oh man, this ain't gonna be good. This ain't gonna be good at all. But it happens, you know, you get your whack up. It is what it is. Totally. Absolutely, I mean. Well, also the first thing is, is we went to an investigation one time, and it was like the lady said, "Oh, I've I walked in and and I and I saw my son floating across the room, and you know I I've you know all this crazy stuff I've seen I've seen elves I've seen these things that look like dwarves running through. You're like what? Wow. You start looking <laughs> at their library, and it's 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 a lot of stuff about like uh um. Mad, like black magic or mystical things, witchcraft. So it's already in their brain that yeah. they already truly believe in this stuff. So that's what everything is going to be from that point on. Oh, I, I again, I agree 100%. I, I think that a lot of religious beliefs, um, what they see on TV, what they read in books, um, the type of person that they are, the type of things that they like to study has a major impact on, um, you know, what kind of, Paranormal activity, they wind up claiming. And, and again, I can give you another prime example. I'm good at that, huh? I give you another prime example. Recently, and Jody knows about this one, recently I did a, 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 I, I did a lot of tests and ran a survey about Ouija boards. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for, apparently, pretty extensive. <laughs> apparently, Ouija boards are completely evil. It opens up gateways and lets in the anti types and fucks everybody all up. So I wanted I wanted to find out if there's any solidifications on that, and I I, I ran several tests, and and obviously I mean the biggest claim is it's a gateway. So I went out and I I made I went to a Toys R Us, and I purchased a Ouija board, and I brought it home, and it cost me a total of twenty six bucks, I think something like that, and and I ran fourteen tests, Brad, and 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 tell me if any of these tests it, it, you would have done differently. I ran 14 tests to see if this Ouija board is a gateway to hell. I, I opened it up. I put um, the pinch planchetta on the board, and I ran a camera on it for seven hours. And I ran seven tests like this for seven, eight hours. And then after reviewing those seven tests, nothing happened at all. So I said, hmm, that's kind of odd. No gateway, no movement. My my room didn't blow up. No fine money. I, I'm getting kind of weird. Thing. So I ran another seven tests. I put the planchetta back on, and I put an EM pump right next to it. I said, okay, maybe it needs energy. And and after reviewing the evidence, nothing happened, Brad, not a damn thing. I'm like, all right, this is kind of weird. No gateway, no swirling motion in the air. My my computer monitor is flying off the desk, and, you know, people aren't moaning and louding or, or anything like that. And so I'm like, what the hell's up with this? And then someone said, it needs human activity, it needs human contact. I'm like, then it ain't no gateway of hell. It's, it's not the board. It's the fucking operator if it needs human contact. Bottom line. So, the intent. Yeah. <laughs> so I, so, I, I so said, true. what? I said, yeah, it's so true. I, I, yeah, I know what you're yeah. talking about. Yeah. The intent so, is, it's, yeah, it's all, it, you know, it's who's using it for sure. And their, their intent, yeah. I think. So I ran a survey after that and I posted it all over Facebook. I said, doing a survey. 
on paranormal stuff, please message me.